Dr. Vicki Peterson here. I want to talk to you today about protein and how much you need. It's definitely a question I get asked a lot. I recently wrote a very in-depth blog about it, so you can see that on the site, rootcausemedicalclinic.com. So we'll try to keep it short and sweet. Protein is something at least I grew up because I used to pass out from low blood sugar a lot. It was eat your protein, eat your protein, did you get enough protein? And that was kind of the mantra. And, and that was something that definitely the medical community thought for a very long time. Uh, that's been debunked uh, probably since the 1970s when it was discovered that some of the problems that we thought were protein deficient problems really were not. And it turns out that Americans in general get more than enough protein. And in fact, 97% of Americans, even who are vegan, plant-based diet eaters and vegetarians, still get enough protein. So it's really not an issue to get enough protein. I think what I more want to talk about is um, the difference between plant-based and animal-based and some of you know the problems associated with animal-based protein. So uh, when we're talking about patients and uh, doing more of a plant-based diet and depending on our patient's health we're putting them on more of an 80-20 plant to animal or even higher plant depending on the diseases that we're trying to reverse for them. So if you're talking to someone about a plant-based diet, they very quickly say, where do I get my protein? And the truth of the matter is, it's still pretty easy to get adequate protein on a plant-based diet. Uh, beans, tofu, legumes, nuts, even uh, plants, I'm sorry, everything's a plant, but even vegetables like um, spinach and broccoli and peas, uh, grains such as quinoa, quinoa is actually a seed, uh, but have decent amount of protein so it's really not difficult to get enough in an average day. One thing you do want to think about is getting enough lysine. Uh, lysine is a particular amino acid that is essential in our diet and while it's gotten very easily if you're eating animals, in the plant-based kingdom, you want to work at it a little bit to make sure you're getting enough of that because it is an essential amino acid that you, your body does not make on its own. And it's found in uh, beans and legumes, tofu, it's high in quinoa, it's high in pumpkin seeds. So these are things, uh, spinach, so these are things that you want to make a little extra effort. And in the blog I was referring to, there's a nice little table of the plant foods that are highest in lysine. They also happen to be foods that are very, very good for you. So it's something you want to stress uh, getting in your diet on a daily basis. Another thing that um, has been thought to be a truism for a very long time for vegetarians and vegans is what's called protein combining, meaning that if a protein is not a complete protein, uh, like such as beans or rice, they're incomplete, they don't have all the amino acids, that protein combining was something where you put those two foods together, like a rice and a bean, and have a complete protein. So it was thought that in order to really glean the benefits of protein, you would have to ingest at each meal a complete protein. It never quite made sense to me, I'll be honest with you. It sounded like a lot of effort for something that probably would work out just fine, <laughs> which was just sort of my intuitive sense when I was younger and heard this. Uh, but now it's been proven that protein combining is, is not necessary because your liver will recirculate and store up to 90 grams of protein and literally, you know, shuffle them around and get you what you need in, in a given day, which is kind of brilliant of your liver, but that's the truth. So. Let's now talk about animal protein. And one thing that happens is that, uh, let's take an average person like myself. I need about 60 grams of protein. I'm over 50, so shh. Um, I need a little bit more because of that age. If I was an elite athlete, I'd need a bit more. Um, children need a bit more. So whether people are breaking down a lot of muscle and building a lot of muscle so they need more younger because they're growing, older because they need a little bit more help and repair. So those extremes that I just mentioned uh, need a little bit more. But the average person, if you take your weight, you multiply it by four. So say you're 100 pounds, you multiply by four is 400, divide by 10, 40. There's your number of grams per pro of protein per day. So it's an easy calculation. And then if you're me, um, over 50 or any of those other groups I talked about, you can actually just take your weight and divide it in half. So I need about 60, 62 grams of protein a day. 
So that just gives you a ballpark. Now when it comes to meat, what, how many grams are in an average steak? 65 grams. So one steak is giving me more protein than I need in an entire day. Uh, let's see, with chicken breast, I had a few things. Well, four ounces of, of chicken was 35 grams, and four ounces is really, is really tiny. Um, yet you can do a serving of black beans for 15 grams. Uh, just a third of a cup of hummus is 16 grams. So it's very easy to get it in plants. My favorite smoothie that has two cups of spinach, I just basically grabbed two big handfuls, but I stuffed it in a cup, and it's about two cups, if not a little bit more. That's 10 grams of protein right there in spinach. So believe me, it's not hard to get enough protein. Really, the problem we're running into in America is the fact that because we're eating so much animal protein, that animal protein is very inflammatory. Uh, much of it is carcinogenic, unfortunately, and obviously cancer is a big problem. Inflammatory are things leading to heart disease, diabetes, overweight. So. There's something called heme iron. You can look that up and, and uh, on my blog, I did a long article about that as well. But they found um, that the in the blood of animals, so the, the, the blood and the muscle of animal, there's something called heme iron. And heme iron is carcinogenic, yet something like spinach that's also high in iron has what's called non-heme iron, which is actually cancer protective. So two types of iron, animal versus plant, one is carcinogenic, the other one is protective. Now, I understand I'm generalizing here, but that's really what we're running into, is that so much of our meat, the way it is processed, the way the animal is treated, being given hormones and antibiotics and what it's being fed, it's being fed GMO feed, uh, it's given drugs and, and hormones to, to bring it to market faster so it gains weight faster. These are unhealthy practices and unfortunately we are what we eat and we are what we eat eats and these are the problems arising. So if you've been thinking about moving toward a plant-based diet, I would very much encourage that. There's tons of research that show that is a very healthy way to go and there's still plenty of protein, fat, and carbohydrates, as I mentioned. Um, and don't worry about the protein because it's pretty effortless to get enough. So I hope that answered the protein question. If your health is not the way you want it to be and you want it to improve, that's what we're here for. Here at Root Cause Medical Clinic, we help the world's busiest people regain, retain, and reclaim their health, their energy, and their resilience. I would love to help you. Reach out to me for a free phone consultation, whether you're local or live at a distance. The telephone number here is 408 733 0400. If you like this video, please share it, and I'll see you next time.